Hello everybody, welcome to Nego Terra Odyssey. We're going to be using those great Shadow of Light Cavendish cards again, which I absolutely love. And I have a really fun read in mind. And this is about being, you know, are you the person you would like most to be? And if not, what can you do right now to transform some areas of your life that help reach that objective? I'll give you a for instance. I mean, I can be quite silly and fun at times, but I am realizing that there are times just because I feel like being flippant or I'm bored or whatever that takes self-restraint. And that makes me proud of myself when I do that. As an example, um, we were at the post office today and we were getting um, the passport for my son all figured out and we needed our IDs. And I gave the woman my license and she was really, really sweet. She's like, I wasn't even paying attention. She's like, oh my gosh, who photographs like this for a license? You look just like a doll. You look amazing. And then I was like, oh, oh, I said, oh, thank you. You know, I wasn't even paying attention. And then it was hilarious one minute later. And she was, but this has been expired. And I had my current one in my um, glove compartment. And I don't know how I grabbed my older one, but I started laughing and I was like, oh, so I go and get that. And she goes, I can't believe it. This one's even better. Like what in the world? And when people ask me strange things like that, like sometimes I just get uncomfortable and I'll say something flip it. Like, I don't know. I was in a Dorian, like packed with Satan. That's how I photographed so well. But I looked around quickly and I saw a bunch of young children. I thought, ah, eh, that might not fly over so well. So I just said, thank you. I stand very still. It's like one of those things where you don't expect attention to be drawn to you. And when it is, you can say things that are silly, but also it's like, you know, I like to make people laugh and be stuff, but now I really am aware who's around me and how that energy will affect them. Right. And saying that I wanted to bring this up to you guys because I was just watching Nicholas Asba and I'm constantly getting DMS and messages and emails from you guys that are empaths. Really, really this time of year, we have to be careful around Halloween and the holidays when people are drinking and celebrating and you lower vibrations come up arguing um, people, the first thing they lose when they're drinking or doing drugs or anything or candies involved is they lose their judgment, right? So there's this kind of aggression. There's all this strange stuff that goes on. Now he equates it to being like a live wire that just gets plugged into a socket, right? It's too much. You have all these different frequencies and ideas and everything just coursing through your um, veins. And it's very, very um, hard to ground out and feel normal and understand what yours or, or somebody else's is basically like you've been plugged into an electrical socket. You feel hate, you feel extremes, you feel um, insecurity, all this stuff, and it doesn't belong to us. But he had this great um, thing. And that happened to me. I think when I really was awake to the fact that I was an empath, I was at work and I started to fail anxiety for no reason. Everything was in order. And then I realized there were a couple people there that emote a lot of insecurity and anxiousness due to work and performance. And I was like, Oh, right away. I knew that. So something that's very helpful right away is um, to envision yourself in silver white light, a big bubble around you or in a triangle to point at your head down to your feet. Um, carry a dark obsidian tr tourmaline or something like that. <clears throat> take breaks, move out of the room that there's large groups of people, especially if they're arguing. Some people, when they drink, they just start to emote the craziest, um, ideas and theories and conspiracies and just, you know, really ridiculous behavior. So remove yourself for a while so you can regroup too. I'm hearing just to relay that message because I feel like there's so many empaths that watch this channel. They really do. And they don't know why all of a sudden they feel agitated. And also what happens is because we have sympathy and people know that they will come and power dump emotion, just emotional overload on us. And they'll leave feeling great, crystal clear and clean. And they all their heaviness is on us. So also to let those people know through firm boundaries, thank you, but I just don't have the bandwidth for this right now. I'm trying to enjoy myself. You know, you're not, um, some agony aunt that they can just stand there and corner you and tell you their every problem then leave all happy, squeaky clean while you're left with all this residue and emotion. I oftentimes um, used to have that in my workplace. Everybody's like, oh, I have this and that. And I worked with some depressed people and they would tell me, but also I knew a holistic approach is to things so that, you know, they would tell me physical ail ailments and I'd try to help them. But at the end of the night, it's like, unless you're protected, you know, you can really have issues with that. So remember, as soon as I heard that, I was like, you know, I think that's a really good message to go out there. You don't need to be that live wire that's tapped into the socket where you're getting overloaded and jolted. Just protect yourself, deep breaths, release that energy and also let people know that, um, you know, you don't have the time right at that moment. You're trying to stay elevated and happy and everybody's 
absolute problem from the day they were born is not your responsibility, right? You're like, thank you. No, I'm good. So we have three cards to choose from today. Ghost of the Pumpkin Patch, count your blessings. Two, the three fates, what comes around. And three, the winged seer, you see clearly and clairvoyance. Oh, I like that a lot. So we're going to start with number one. Now, this is about, I love this. This forlorn little figure looks so sad, right? Oh my gosh. So the divination message with this is something precious is all about you, but it has become so familiar that you can barely see it anymore. It is such a fixture in, fixture in your life and familiarity has bred, if not contempt, a kind of blindness. So the beautiful little girl ghost in the pumpkin patch asks you very gently to see the abundance all around you and to appreciate that while you're in physical form here, there's much that you can enjoy. She wishes for you to harvest what is yours now and also to take steps to call in any debts. Debts right now. There can be outstanding money issues associated with this card and share the bounty. Don't let anybody cheat you and know that you don't own a single thing in truth. It will always pass through your hands. But still, ironic, ironically, these things have earned through your hard work are worth protecting. They are not too small. They are not too ordinary. You have more material wealth than you think. So please do not count your blessings every day because it's what... Oh, sorry. Yep. Please do count your blessings every day. I thought it was going to go on to expand that, you know, it runs through our fingers. This is really true. So what I'm hearing right now, and to, in order to be your best self, firstly, you set boundaries and know what you have, what you create, what you do, what you're selling, what you're offering has value. Don't let people underestimate them. Don't let them take advantage of you. If you're a painter or a singer, whatever, they want you to write a song. You're a Reiki healer. They want you to do healing. You're a tarot reader. You're doing a read for them. Every single thing that you have that's a service has value. Make sure that just because you have this skill set, you're not handing it out. Friends, whomever just doesn't think that you're going to be obliging and give all this skill set away, right? Just say you're an excellent muralist and you can do great kids murals. Oh, would you like to come paint my children's wall? Right up front, um, let them know that this is a business situation because your time is of value. I mean, not if it's your best friend and you want to do this as a gift or a favor, but never let somebody assume that you're going to do something for them um, free of cost when it's your time and time is our most valuable asset. You know, it's like, sometimes I will have people that want me to do something like really quickly and you know, th they pay me a premium for it. There are still times where I will say no to it because I'm dying to just go out for a walk and go to the gym. And I don't want to, at that point, um, do an on camera read or do something at that point. You know, it's like, I get to decide. And the thing is you get to decide, right? We, you're not here to just hand out presents and that's going to help you because then you're going to reach this beautiful point in your life where you're realizing, um, I'm not the token, um, gift giver, right? That you have really, really great things to offer. Again, there will be a corresponding fee with that. People need to survive. Things cost money. And I don't know why some people think just because they're a relative or they might know you that you would do something like that. So beautiful energy. And we're going to pull some terror. So I feel like that's something that's going to help you elevate and be your best self too. You're not going to feel like you're being taken advantage of. You're also going to have gratitude for what's around you. This happens to me sometimes too. My house is a literal Aladdin's cave. I mean, just look up over here, like right there. That was just, I wasn't even setting up a, um, I wasn't even setting up for a reading like that intentionally. I was just going through some of my inventory. Then this is like a one one hundredth or one one thousandth probably even of the stuff that I have in stock of things I've made and acquired. And I'll look in drawers and they would just be filled to the hilt with gorgeous stones. Like I just refound my smoky quartz, which I absolutely love so much. And I was like, oh, it, it's ridiculous. It's like, I have so many gems in this Aladdin's cave that I don't even see it sometimes as the beautiful works of art that they are because they're constantly in front of my face. We need to do that with family. We need to do that with friends, business associates, things we've created, works of arts that we've placed on our wall, um, beautiful things that were sentimental when we purchased them. We purchased them for a reason. We were in a headspace. We felt drawn to them right? So to appreciate that, that will help you formulate a very good kind of um, friendship with yourself. You know, that you understand that things have value and that um, they're meaningful. I'll do that with my decks. I will just cherish them and relook at the artwork and reread the books and just be like in awe of the fact 
firstly, that somebody created these amazing things. Secondly, that I can afford to have them, um, you know, and thank my patrons and all of you guys who support and get private reads and things for me. Um, it makes my day. I literally get to get up and play with sparkly gems and tarot cards. I'm like, am I even on, am I even on earth anymore? <laughs> you know what I mean? So not to take these things that are beautiful people, places and things around you for granted to really step up and see them for the, the beautiful things that they are. So you have transformation and then you have the gardener too. So this is saying to another way that you can really, really um, tap into things around you is not stay in the same place. Transform. You are evolving every day. We never stay the same. We never really have the same attitude about something when we really look at it and we're growing and we're thriving to really be proud that you're elevating all the time. Have pride in that. Know that. Bring, have a sense of, you know, um, distinctive pride in that. And the gardener, you're cultivating so much right now naturally, um, friendships, um, gifts, all of that. You're really tapping into this beauty and wonder that's around you. Be proud of that. It's amazing. If you guys want to stick through to the end, I will flip over all the, um, Cavendish cards so you guys can have a quick look. See, I did these in another video and, um, yeah, I like to give you guys, I know there's a lot of readers that watch me and, you know, it's quite an expenditure. If you have, uh, you know, 10 de decks, you're really thinking about what to get. Sometimes the artwork is not explicit and you can't see on the site. So if somebody does a review, it's really great. Like Cherry Enchantress does some great deck reviews and she shows the book and everything. And it's really nice because, you know, you can save a lot. It's like those things. I might start um, a quick thing on Patreon of makeup review to save people money because I try all different types of things and there's nothing worse than going out and buying something and find out it is an utterly crap formula, right? And then every once in a while, you'll just get a gold mine and something you keep forever because it really works. And it's about cultivating. This is about you cultivating what works for you and makes you feel good. The environments that make you feel good. I feel like that you like to be outside and you like nature. That will help you grow. That will help you feel good. That'll help you feel elevated and know, you know, that what, what you're offering um, to the world is substantial and that you're growing and learning every single day and have proud and pride in who you are, um, what you're creating in the world and your life path purpose for sure group one. So beautiful energy. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to press like and subscribe and all my links are down below. This is one of my favorite cards. She just looks like so, oh, I love her. I love her. So that's you guys. If you're new to my channel, all the links are down below as well. I don't, I couldn't even remember if I already said that because I did, I shot a couple of videos today. If you need a private read or anything. So come check the end of this. Um, I always have wonderful people that do timestamps for me and you can check out the review of this deck. I'll flip over all the pictures because I love Lucy Cavendish. She's so talented. So let's say we have what comes around. Let's see what the book has to say about that. I feel like that sounds very karmic to me, right? The three fates. So this is you may be you may be you may be enjoying your own life's reruns lately, wallowing through the memories of feeling sad, bittersweet, and nostalgic about the good old days. Whatever they were, whenever they were, you know what? It's fine to muse on the past. Your memories are precious and don't need to be tended, but it's another thing altogether. Oh, sorry, they do need to be tended, but it's another thing altogether to be filled with regret. Wishing you've done things differently. Life is a constant do-over. You get a fresh chance every second you're alive. So stop beating yourself up. You have an opportunity to heal, to clear, and to no longer feel sad about the same things anymore. You can do things differently. You are not a prisoner. Uh, you know, things don't have to be done the way they were always done. Even if you judge it to be a mistake, it can be reworked and learned from. So that's its wisdom. You're not alone. We all have karmic lessons, themes, and stories that seem to repeat, right? Learn from this. Be aware what's taking place as a fateful encounter to master life. If you take this approach, you'll be richer for learning, wise, free, and able to help others as well. I really love that. So this is part of the thing where you can really elevate into your best self is not being regretful. Oftentimes, if we go back and, you know, we're mournful and we're just, I'm um, living in the past, we're not present when that's happening. So we don't hear the beautiful bird singing. We don't um, see all the beauty that is available to us right now. Right. And oftentimes, you know, when you get over nostalgic and, um, by doing that, that's, 
provides a lack mentality. Like you don't have what you have right now isn't good enough, isn't um, warm enough, isn't abundant enough. And what happens is due to law of attraction manifesting, you'll create blockages, your um, stagnancy and wealth relationships and other things because you're not in the here and now and you're not showing appreciation and or um, an abundance attitude and the universe doesn't appreciate that to a degree where they'll stop all those things, right? It's like if you're constantly looking a gift horse in the mouth and being like, oh, why couldn't things be like that? A lot of people tend to do that with what they perceive as lost, youthful, good looks. You know, a lot of people, you see them on those, um, what are those housewife shows where they're like, they're in their fifties and sixties and whatever. And, oh my God, I've never seen so much strange plastic surgery that it, like in one season they they can look like a different person. It's, it's crazy to me. And, you know, they have like, self-induced crisis after self-induced crisis and it's so ridiculous and it's all due to one you know silly facet of looks and it's it really doesn't matter i'm watching this hilarious show right now glow about these wrestlers and it's a great great um kind of um interior look at it doesn't matter how good looking you are if you're if you're lacking in personality or you think you're all that or you're vacuous or you're silly looks do not get you very far. They're just going to, it doesn't matter. People start to see you really for, you know, the silly, vacuous, insane creature that you are, even if you're an absolute stunner, they may tolerate you a little longer if they're also on that same wavelength, but anybody of quality or substance, it doesn't matter. You have to have, you know, that, that thing that says, um, I want to raise the vibration of other people. I want them to feel good. I want to be a good friend. I want to be, you know, a good mentor, whatever it is. It's like what's inside that counts. We're going to pull some, um, some of these cards too for you guys as well. So you have the mermaid's love and then you have the, can you hear me? And I'm actually going to read these from the book because, um, some are very apparent, but some are, I feel are a little bit, um, very unique. So this is saying a woman floats in a seashell on the big sea. She looks to the horizon where she's waiting for somebody. She's holding a trumpet in her hand, ready to blow it when the time comes. The ocean symbolizes her feelings, vast and seemingly unknowable. It surrounds her in an endless arc. She looks lonely and deserted, but she has a way of connecting, a tool for turning passive silence into supportive communication. She just needs to raise her trumpet and call for help. So this is also talking about our, our current environments. Are we looking around to see what's beautiful and wistful and dreamy and lovely and artistic, or do we just <clears throat> look through drab, uninspired eyes, you know, because that's a big, important aspect, changing our perspective. It's almost like sometimes being blind to the beauty that's all around us and that surrounds us, but to really open your eyes. Um, I sometimes, I like to just watch the freak shows that are my cats and how they, I'll go find them and just find out how they're sleeping and I'll get in such a good mood because, you know, cats, they like, they're almost like made out of liquid that they can form in a box over anything. They just pour themselves over things. Some of them love the same kind of fabrics. Calm down down below if your cat seeks out like satin or velvet or some type of thing. Like if I lay down any satin or silk shirt, that's winter. She lies all over it. Now, if it's velvet or velour, then mochi will lay all over. It's very funny. They like their different fabrics. And you know, it's sort of that thing like the, the ambiance that's around you and do you see the beauty in all of it? And that'll help raise your vibration and make you feel good about you, your surroundings and everything else. So I'm just going to take a sip of water. I went out to the park. It's so lovely, but it do, does have quite a few, um, allergies out there. So the mermaid's love is love, partnership, support, and accord. A loving couple is shown on this card. The woman is a mermaid. Her hair and tail seem to float through the sky. A man with feathers holds her hand. He grounds and protects her. They are from different worlds, water and sky, but they are complete together. A perfect love union. Their differences make them stronger and balanced. They support each other in their own way, but always from a place of respect and love. Oh, I love that. Let's get this closer. That's beautiful. Look, he's got little feathers. I love that. So again, this speaks to, you know, um, really feeling the love that's in all our partnerships to really feel supported, show, um, different show, 
support when other people need it, right? Oftentimes what happens in family units is people kind of get in a competitive state. That doesn't help anybody. You know, like when somebody's ahead and they're trying to um, voice how they're proud of something and then a sibling will try to cut it down because they think everything's competitive. Um, that is draining so quickly and it's very um, corrosive in relationships, right? Because you're not celebrating that person's gain. You're actually just um, suffering by comparison and then trying to make everybody else feel bad because of that. So that's a way if we refrain from that and we drop the competitiveness, our lives get so much more beautiful, right? I love that energy for you. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to press like and subscribe and all my links are down below and I'll do a quick flip through of this too. So just remember those karmic little lessons. How would you feel if you did said or otherwise, right? It's a reminder of that. So again, all my links are down below if you need a private read. Thank you for liking and subscribing, everybody. Amazing. I'm really excited to see what this winged seer says. You see clearly in clairvoyance. I definitely feel that a lot of you are coming into a higher connection with some of your gifts right now, whether it's clairaudiency, um, clairvoyance, claircognizance. There's a whole bunch of stuff. And funnily enough, I feel like when the veil starts to thin around Halloween, it comes out very strongly too. So the divination message with this is, your clairvoyant ability is being enhanced by the winged seer. You may be able to tune in and have a remote view, almost be able to see behind doors and into rooms and receive images that let you know what someone is doing without you actually being there at the time. And all of these experiences will either empower or scare you. You have asked for more information, asked to discover what you need to know. Now that the information has come to you, you must be courageous and take action based on what you cannot logically explain. It's important now more than ever to be honest about what you can see. But most of all, be honest with your own self. So this is saying too that you do have gifts that you're going to unravel and be honest. What do you see and um, how can you hone your craft and don't allow fear to come in with anything and also to never misuse any gifts too because I feel like sometimes um, people know when somebody else, especially people that, you know, have, um, some clairvoyancy, some, any of the clairs, it's a lot of things are enhanced, higher emotional intelligence. So, um, it's like one of those things that it should always be for a higher power and a higher service to help somebody to be of ed, aid and make them feel comfortable. Never take advantage. If you think somebody's weak or immobilized by a fear to try to take advantage of them financially or otherwise, it's always should be used for the greater good, right? We should always have, and if somebody is feeling feeble or they're elderly or something, we don't get impatient because it takes up our time. We become more helpful and loving. That's how you'll feel good about yourself. Cause I definitely feel that this group, when they're impatient or um, they speak ill of somebody or they're impatient with somebody. They don't feel great after because, you know, they have a high, they set a high bar for themselves and how they should behave. So I feel like if you kind of, um, exhibit any kind of just like nastiness and patience or sharpness, you feel bad after that, but there's a way to, um, get a rain on that. That's simply by taking a deep breath and saying everybody else's time is just as important as ours. Right. So we're going to pull some cards. Yeah. When we don't make everything all about us, that's when we tend to do well. Nice. Tiny triumphs. Definitely. Let's start with this. So tiny triumphs is all about, um, you know, being happy for these tiny wins. They don't have to be these huge victories, these huge bonuses, these, um, golden ratio moments where we get everything right. It's, it's about the tiny triumphs. The fact that you, um, walked for 15 minutes today and you feel better that you chose something dietary that was smart and good for you. Um, that you pause for a moment before you spoke. So you could issue, um, kind words as opposed to impatient words that you were a good listener, a good friend, all those things, they are beautiful, tiny triumphs. And protective nest is saying, you know, that you are this way for a lot of people. You see this giant egg, you are, you are a calm sort of, um, you're like a calm, huge lighthouse on a stormy sea for people. They come to you and you know, they feel safe. They feel like you protect them. You bring new life to situations and people when they feel down. You see that beautiful nest in her hair. It's like you're this beautiful, warm incubation of understanding and caring. And when you do that, you feel really good about yourself because you realize that you are nurturing and all it takes is a little bit of focus and being aware of what you're saying and being present in the moment, right? Whenever we're present in the moment, we do good. And then like a bird that remember I'm a bird, bitch. I get a 
to fly. Be like a bird free. Fly away when something doesn't suit you. Spread your wings. Go see a new vista. Go be more expansive. Go check out what is going on and is around the world and is available to you. You are never restrained. You, you never have to stay in one place. So beautiful energy. I love that for you, group three. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Don't forget to press like and subscribe and all my links are down below. So I'm going to do a quick fan, fan through of these so you can see some. So we have Lady with the Bosch Egg, Ancient Wisdom. We have Dress of Alchemy, Release Your Power. That was in yesterday's Angel of Time, Working Too Hard. We had Fairy of the Green World yesterday, Lantern Fairy, a clean, solu a clear solution. Two Little Witches, this is so cute, magical space clearing. I love this, I Am Kali from Death Comes Rebirth. This made me laugh so hard, Sewer Mermaid, Sewer Mermaid. Your sensuality is beautiful. Yeah, straight out of the sewer. I love this, Strange Lonely, holding on way too tight. I love that. The symbolism, Angel de los Muertes, transitions into the spirit realm. Look how cute. Violet Duchess stifled, um, bored and stuck. Then we have dried flower, very sweet memories. I just love this artwork. Poe, time for change to learn something new, to use technology and gadgets with wisdom. I love this. Autumn is my last chance. Please don't lose hope. Outer trick or treating. Wee, we're here. Snow angel, signs are with you already. Fairy of the divine hand, intoxication, distorted view, overindulgence. I love that card. Angel of Alchemy, Miracle, beautiful. She looks like Cher. Sea Beacon Fairy, Guidance, but where will it lead you? E Eclipse Mermaid, a powerful energy shift. Three Witchy Sisters, cute, the power of three. Grumpy Red Fairy, be true to yourself. Death and the Maiden, Invasion Boundaries, Violated Dominance, that's scary. Mildew Fairy, clean up time. That's my daughter is the Mildew Fairy. Marie Masquerade, Glamour, Intrigue, and Drama, beautiful. Car Carnivorous Flower Fairy, a tempting offer, has a high price. Pink Lotus Fairy, a time for spirit. Voodoo in Blue, that's my favorite. A back off, look at a little... Her little cross, Violet Angel, Breaking Dawn, Fairy of the Highlands. This is adorable. It's time to be brave. Menda, Broken Heart Fairy, Healing from Heartache. Sea Storm, Calm Amid Chaos. Faceless Ghosts in a Haunted Girl, Ghost People. Ghost People! Witch at the End of the World, An Important End, A New Beginning, A Clockwork Pumpkin, A Wonderful Idea, An Aha Moment, Nautilus, this is beautiful, Nautilus Princess, Powerful Personal Growth, Ghosts of the past, the past returns for a time. Shallow grave, you miss someone. Kenny Kane Angel, it's time for a treat. And there's like just a couple more. Strange Valentine, this is adorable. Love is strange. Amara the Menahune, Aloha Healing. I love that one. That's probably like my second favorite card. Storm Angel, Collision of Belief, Styles, Attitudes, and Energy. And I will show you quickly how much information you get in the book. I was blown away. Very, very beefy. So just say, this is one Snow Angel. You'll get about the Snow Angel. Then you'll get the Snow Angel Speaks. And then you'll get the Divination Message, which I usually just read you down there. But I think if I do this in live reads, I'll read like a whole card out. But really excellent writing. I was really impressed with this deck. So love and light, you guys. I'm going to go upload.